Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I ask uh, unanimous consent to enter into the record a letter from Christopher Arps of Americans for uh, Citizens Voting, um, an email of support from 6623. Um, and I also ask for unanimous consent to enter into the record a the Migration Policy Institute's profile of the unauthorized population within uh, Washington, D.C., dictating that over 20,000 non-citizens live in the district. I'd like to thank our witnesses for being here today to speak about the sacred right to vote in free and fair elections. I'll put it bluntly, allowing non-citizens to vote in American elections is a slap in the face to every American who fought and sacrificed for this right. In 2021, New York City became the largest municipality in the country to allow non-citizens to vote in local elections. However, even former Mayor Bill de Blasio a committed progressive. He refused to sign this legislation when it came to his desk. Even he agreed that there's an av a value to American citizenship and the right to vote. While I was chairman of the New York State Republican Party, I sued New York City's uh, council, uh, and the courts ruled against the city allowing non-citizens to vote, deeming it unconstitutional. Allowing those who are not American citizens to vote in our elections, whether it's here in the nation's capital or in any locality or state, it threatens the integrity and the security of our elections and devalues what it truly means to be an American citizen. Mr. Cuccinelli, Congress has given tremendous authority over the government in the District of Columbia, and this includes authority over elections within the district. Uh, on the other hand, Congress's role in the state and local elections is generally quite limited. Uh, what actions could Congress take to ensure that other municipalities don't follow the lead of New York City and open their municipal elections to non-citizens? Well, uh, what, what you're doing here with the ACE Act is obviously a good step because in the area you have the greatest authority, the District of Columbia, you are you would be advancing citizen, protection of citizenship, and I agree with you, Congressman, on the value of citizenship itself is, is devalued when non-citizens vote um, and appreciate, frankly, the role you played in New York in dealing with the city of New York's attempt to massively devalue its U.S. citizens' own votes in that city. Um, we, this this is a, a problem ac across the country. Um, it is being dealt with state by state. You mentioned an article by Chris Arps of St. Louis, if I recall correctly. Um, he has been a leader in uh, advancing this at bipartisan position, by the way, uh, of uh, going state by state to try to reinforce what most Americans always assumed to be the case and that is that only Americans get to vote in American elections. Absolutely. Uh, D.C.'s radical proposal to allow non-citizens to vote in D.C. elections has rightfully received a tremendous amount of attention. Uh, I mean, we've, frankly, I mean, we've welcomed employees of Vladimir Putin and President Xi to vote in our district elections here, you know, people that are here on, on a permanent basis. Uh, but I suspect that that isn't the only anti-election integrity measure that's been adopted by the D.C. Council in recent years. Can you talk about what else in D.C.'s election law co compromises election integrity and should be fixed? So it's been mentioned here repeatedly that the Heritage Election Fraud Database doesn't contain any D.C. cases. I would note that um, no of personal offense to my fellow witness here, but DC's administration of its elections over the years is so sloppy and careless, they don't have the measures in place to catch fraudulent activity. They don't have the desire to do it. And even if they did, the DC Council's office, it would, it would be nearly a miracle to see the DC Council's office actually advance a prosecution. And when you have that behind you, I know as a former Attorney General, and you're on the front lines, you don't bother putting the cases together because you know they're not going to go forward. Uh, what other anti-election integrity measures do you envision that they could attempt to enact in the months ahead? Well, certainly what's contained in the ACE Act, photo ID is the most obvious, um, including its application to mail-in ballots so far as they're allowed. Perhaps uh, the next large-scale change that would be beneficial in terms of confidence and reducing the prospect for fraud is stopping the mailing out, unsolicited mailing out of ballots, not applications, but ballots themselves. 
Thank you. And, I, and I'll say it again. Allowing non-citizens to vote in American elections is a slap in the face to every American who fought and sacrificed for this sacred right. Our nation's capital and many other cities around the country should never throw away centuries of progress and sacrifice. I have fought this for years, dating back to my time uh, as a statewide leader in New York, and I will continue to fight for American values here in Congress. It's not only a national security threat, it's a slap in the face to American citizens who cherish our freedom. And Mr. Chairman, I yield back.